What's cracking, people? Angelic Mayhem here. Welcome to Final Thoughts, the video series where I point out the pros and cons of a brand new video game so that you can decide for yourself if this title is right for you. In this episode, I am currently in the middle of my second game of Red Shirt. That's about uh, 10 hours in total. In this series, you never have to wait for my opinion. In this case, Red Shirt is a challenging and unique concept with a penchant for leaving you on the horns of a dilemma and a countdown to oblivion that makes each decision even dinner with a friend, a life or death one. But is it right for you? Well, let's find out. To begin, Red Shirt is a sci-fi simulation game where you must use your internet savvy to save your own life. So here's the deal. You are living on a space station and have the good fortune to learn that something awful is about to happen to the station and it's time to leave. However, instead of evacuating the entire station, because that would require the head mucky mucks to do some actual work, the powers that be have decided instead that they would rather save themselves and anyone else important enough to care about and leave the plebs to their fate. How Republican of them. But that's where you come in. You are a lonely janitor whose serendipitous knowledge of the situation leaves you in a unique position. You must improve your social, educational, and occupational standing at the station until you achieve a level worthy of being taken away. Whether you decide to befriend an ambassador, become the personal assistant of the station chief, or simply sleep your way to salvation by becoming the lesbian life partner of a high-ranking cyborg is entirely up to you. Red Shirt it was made by a company called Positech, a UK-based developer you may remember from my review of their political simulation game, Democracy 3. So let's talk about pros and cons. First up, the pros. Um, there's a lot of humor in this game. It's subtle, uh, but it really adds something. Um, there are parody lyrics and vague book posts that are comical, but my favorite are the animations on the day at work screens which show uh, people being shredded by a copier or burning off a limb while cleaning the outside of the station. Uh, the most important part of understanding this game is the timer. You have 160 days, or actually turns is what they are, uh, to escape the station. Why? Well, we're not really sure yet, but getting off is the key. This adds a huge amount of pressure on each decision. If you go to lunch with a friend, he or she will love you more, but it could ruin your Saturday of filling out paperwork to obtain your next career position. Finding the balance is the key, and that actually is quite challenging, especially when you throw a demanding girlfriend into the mix. You can be gay, lesbian, into robots, into space squids, or date a bowl of jello if you so choose. This game exists in a universe where bigotry exists individually, but not systemically. The store in the game is hard to navigate, but the items you can buy are invaluable in pushing towards your goals. Some of the career requirements can only be achieved realistically by buying the items to level up key stats. At first, I didn't like that, but now I love it because it lets you play the game differently each time uh, by allowing you to buy different items to forge different paths. Uh, the away missions are a great mechanic. Um, basically, you are forced to go to the surface of some random planet, and some or all of the people who are with you end up dead. And it's almost always the people you like, and the bastards you know, usually survive. Um, they are then replaced by new people to meet and befriend. And finally, the variety of events, items, and people are what really make this game replayable for a long time. Uh, it's never the same game twice. Sometimes you can meet a sugar daddy ambassador and he'll whisk you away for the rest of your life. Other times you'll have to buy a ticket off station and hope that it's real. From space operas to floating golf, you're going to have a new narrative composed of a hundred different options. Now let's talk about the cons. Uh, the interface in this game is rough. Uh, there are important buttons nested within other important buttons, and I find the ever-looming presence of the Spacebook page to be very distracting. Um, I dream of someday being able to minimize that page. Also, on the interface design, when you launch an event and you get to choose who you will invite, the game gives you a list of everyone in the station. That's fantastic. The problem is, when you go to make a Spacebook friend, you have this wonky web mechanic that is visually interesting when you first look at it, 
But in reality, it hinders your ability to find new friends quickly. Um, I think it was a poor design choice. Um, if you start in the career mode, finding the next job you want to shoot for is quite easy. But if you click on one of the requirements of that job to see how you can improve yourself or you know what it's going to take or what you can buy or whatever, you are taken out of career mode. Okay, So this creates a situation where if you're trying to gauge the value of different jobs and you want to you know compare different jobs, you actually have to click a lot of buttons. Some of the events you can host have absurd buffs and debuffs for your character. For instance, if you go to eat at a burger place, you take a huge hit to your health, even though you're eating something. This is because the writers wanted you to feel bad about turning down the veggie restaurant. They need to focus less on making political statements and more on creating a balance system where each event boosts and lowers many stats to create more dynamic ways of playing the game. Uh, to those ends, having to eat to stay healthy at all is a very boring idea. Okay, why not shower to stay healthy? Why not include sex to make your girlfriend happy? There's a lot of stuff they need to focus. This game would be better served with a little less minutia. Uh, and finally, there is a system that encourages you to accomplish certain achievements to earn a boost. Um, if you don't like the goal they present to you, you can buy another random goal to replace it. That price rises sharply with each successive purchase. Even when you're first starting out, this system is completely worthless. Okay, Avoid it like the plague. The boost it gives are practically worthless, and it isn't smart enough to give you credit, for instance, for a job it asks you to get that is now behind you on the career trade. So if I'm rank 4, I should get credit for the rank 2 job it's asking me to pick up, because I'm clearly not going backwards just to get that boost. So final thoughts. It may seem weird to buy a game whose sales pitch is, quote, use a quasi-Facebook system to make people love you, close quote. But this game is more than that. It's a suspenseful game with an ever-present timer and a bevy of people all vying for your attention while you try to sneak in some personal time to get yourself to a rank that warrants your continued existence in the eyes of others. Though decidedly camp and marred by a noisy interface, nonetheless, this title is going to be fun for people who like games where leveling up is the key to victory. And I happen to be one of them. But is it right for you? Well, only you can decide that, and hopefully this video has helped. If you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comments below. In the meantime, thank you for watching this video, and if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button or subscribe to my YouTube channel for more content like this in the future. I'm Angelic Mayhem, and I'll see you next time.